gonna use some of this rosewood to make up some cabinet doors. It is so good to be using tools again. For those paying attention, you might be asking the question, hang on, didn't you say that you were going to be doing the lining? Right people, it's time finally to get started on the lining. To cut a radius in the top rail, paint those ends, then I can take them into Mistress and start to fit them. That beautiful Western Red Cedar smell just started floating up. So what I'm doing here is just giving these a bit of a sand so that I can see what sort of a grain, both colour and the way the grain's running. And the reason is I'm going to use some of this rosewood to make up some cabinet doors for the galley, three actually. And so of the stock I've got, I want to be able to make a choice on the grain and the colour because all three doors will be clear finished, so you'll see the grain, but two doors in particular, when you come down the companionway and you look into the galley, you will see those. I've got a choice, so why not? I've given these a bit of a sand now, and you can actually see that each one is quite different to the others. And once they've got clear finish on them, of course, it brings out the colors a lot more. This one looks like it'll be quite red, this one is probably halfway between this one and this one. This one's the lightest, however, it's got that really wavy grain, almost that sort of tiger grain that I had for some of the cabin sole in the saloon area there. So I don't really want to use that. And then this one down the bottom looks a little red as well. So this one's looking like the one. What I will do is I'll sand the other ends as well and just see if there's much difference at the other end. It is so good to be using tools again, especially when it comes to working with rosewood. What a way to dive back into the work. Loving it. Well, I'm just saying again, oh, it is so nice to be doing boat work again. One of the things I did do whilst I was laid up, I've made a, another list. This is actually list number three. And this list will basically take Mistress to the water with almost everything done. Certainly all the building and all the functional stuff. I'll come back to why I'm pointing that out in a second, but I've got the pieces that I need to rip up in order to make those galley cabinet doors. So that's what I'll be doing shortly. For those paying attention, you might be asking the question, hang on, didn't you say that you were going to be doing the lining? Yes, but what I've decided to do, which is why I point this list out, is there are a few things that I won't be actually doing, or at least part of those jobs I won't be doing. So what I've done is, I've had a good look at my lists and jobs that I need other people either to do part of the work or all of the work, I'm going to try and get those running at the same time that I'm working. And that's why I want to get these cut up now because I'll be taking them to the joiner just where I am here and they'll be doing a bit of work 
to help me get these doors made. I don't have a thicknesser and they have a good setup for clamping to make sure that everything's all squared. So that's why I'm going to be getting their help. That's ripped those up. That's good enough. Now to take to the joiner tin. It'll come back looking pretty different to this. I just wanted to point out too that as you can notice, each end has numbers on it. When I first cut that full length, I actually marked off those numbers so that when it comes to putting all of this stuff together, that hopefully I can get the matching grain for each style going vertical and the rails that will match. Like the cabin sole, I'm just trying to keep all the grain together to hopefully give some symmetry to the grain and just add that extra little something. If only you could smell this rosewood. Oh, lovely. Right people, it's time finally to get started on the lining for the coach roof and the decks. I have been so looking forward to this and I know there's a lot of other people out there who've been thinking my goodness like when is it going to happen yeah me too <laughs> the process will be fairly simple but there is a lot of work involved as you can imagine this is a heck of a lot of coach roof coach roof sides and deck space and then there's the ends of the boat as well and of course with all the different bulkheads in place everything will need to be cut to the right length so there is going to be a lot of work in it but my goodness i'm just looking forward to getting the first two pieces of panelling in place. I say two because one won't really give the idea of what's going to happen, whereas two, you'll see that V-joint. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, which is, I need to put these battens up on all of these beams. The holes are already pre-drilled in the steel, which is great. I did that back in the build stage, another little thing that I've done. It's all painted. So all that should be required is to measure each beam where the batten can go uninterrupted. Of course, there's cross beams in different places of the deck. And as I say, there's bulkheads as well. I've already cleaned off all the foam on the side that the batten needs to go. So let me get started.
The last thing I need to do with this rosewood before taking it to the joiner to do his bit is to cut a radius in the top rail for each door. I've actually transferred those measurements down onto this stand here and I'm going to use a string, anchor that to this stand behind me and just get those radiuses right. As you can see here, I've got representations of each style here and then because there's two sizes of doors, one is this dimension and the other is this dimension and then the centres for each are here and I've drawn the height for each radius and that's where I'll go to when I use that string line to do those arcs. Now that I've got the distance of those radiuses for each one, what I'm going to do is transfer that onto a bit of plywood which I'm going to use as a jig and then what I'll be doing is using the router to make that radius on the plywood which I'll use for a jig and I'm using a flush bit on this router. I'll secure each top rail onto the jig and then with the flush bit I'll be able to just copy that radius. What I do need to do though is add the distance from the edge of where this router bit will cut to the outside of the router base where that's going to rub along that batten that I'll nail in place to initially use that as the boundary for the jig. Probably sounds a bit complicated so I'll do those measurements, nail that batten in place and you'll see what I mean. Righto, now that they're chopped up, I'll give them a quick sand on the corners just to take off those sharp edges because I do want to paint the ends of them, otherwise that's just exposed pine and that wouldn't take much to start to rot, especially being lining on the coach roof where potentially there could be some condensation. The paint I'm using is this Dulux product here. This was recommended by the guy that supplied me with the Western Red Cedar. He said that this gear around the cedar, which I'm transferring across to here, and with two coats, will be enough to protect that cedar. I'm going on his word, and he's got boat credibility. So he's done a lot of jobs, apparently, exactly with this panelling, and this is all they use. And I'm going to use that on the ends of this timber as well. I figure that'll be enough. Most of it's protected with that coating that they put on. It's a building product. It's very, very thick. It's almost like it's melamine coated. It's pretty thick. So a quick sand, paint those ends, then I can take them into Mistress and start to fit them. Whew.
What do you reckon? Is that is that a wrap? Yep. <laughs> Number two. So I'm ready to get some coats on the end of those battens. This is a mineral based paint. I forgot to say that before. So mineral terps is the cleanup or thinning. They basically say you don't need to thin it. And the other good thing about it is the recoat is one hour between coats at approximately 25 degrees. So poured a little bit out here, enough I think for the two coats on the ends. So I'll get that on now and an hour later get the second coat on goodness none of that waiting 24 hours for the epoxy to cure hey <laughs> Well, well, oh, the time has finally come to unpack this beautiful Western Red Cedar VJ panelling. As soon as I took off that white plastic, you saw me do this. My goodness, that beautiful Western Red Cedar smell just started floating up and sitting here. Oh, I wish you could smell it. It is such, such beautiful timber. The quality on this just looks absolutely A-grade. They've done such a good job, and so I'm really looking forward to starting to work with this. What I will be doing is the first thing is using, as I mentioned before, that primer undercoat, the oil-based one, as instructed from the guys that actually manufacture this. So I'll be putting two coats of that on all of this before I start cutting it up to be fitted inside of Mistress. It's gonna be a lot of work in that, of course, but I don't need to do it all at the same time. Just beautiful. I'm so glad that I'm now able to make a start on this. It's been a slowly but surely restart to the good boat work, always keeping my right knees healing in mind, and I am so happy to be making good progress again. In the next episode, that's number one, <laughs> only a hundred more to go. I'm really already getting into a bit of a rhythm. It's looking like I'll be able to get a lot done quickly. Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website. And of course, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.